Now, let me just take you quickly through the word. Because when the people of God left Israel and God made a covenant with them and he gave them instruction in Exodus 33, he said, and three times a year you'll come together and you'll celebrate with me. See, that's not old covenant because what you find over in the new covenant, Jesus demonstrated those same three coming together times. Passover. Pentecost, and Feast of Tabernacles. And you also find that it, it is doing something in us when we're recognizing God's order of timing. Now, remember the Lord said that when they came out of Egypt. Think about what Joel said. We just sang it. He prophesied that there would come a time when the Holy Spirit would fall when on Every, all mankind, sons, daughters. And so you've got a practice going on every year at the same time. You have a prophecy going on that people are watching for because they knew it was a real prophecy. They knew it was key. And all of a sudden, at this time of year, 3,000 years later, they're just meeting like you are, and all of a sudden it happens. See, that's the thing about us coming together in God's time. Things you've been watching for, things you've been waiting for, things that have prophesied over you, all of a sudden at a certain moment, they're going to happen. But they're not going to happen if we're out of sync and we're out of time. Therefore, God has to get us moving with some sort of semblance of time where we are seeking him, not just individually, not just corporately, not just territorially, but seeking him also generationally and as a nation. It becomes very important that we are awakened to this fact. And then all of a sudden, just like on the day of Pentecost from Acts in chapter 2, that we all know something will manifest. Now say that out loud. I'm ready for something to manifest. Now, now look at how we're moving. Go ahead, Chad. This is really what it looks like in the spirit world that you're moving through. You are moving from door to door to door, glory to glory to glory, promise after promise after promise. And you know the enemy wants to slam a door in your face. He doesn't want you to get to the end of this corridor because what's going to happen, you're going to break into a glory realm and then when you come out of it, everywhere you walk, that glory is going to be demonstrated. And so here we are, and this is another reason for timing. Here we are, all of a sudden you're at a certain place in your journey and there's a particular anointing you get at every one of those doors. You are, you are anointed, but you are being anointed. Now, let's say that. I am anointed, but I am being anointed. And that becomes very important. Also, remember my grandmother speaking to me. She went to a Baptist church. My grandfather met, went to a Methodist church, and uh, my family were, went in and out to various places, but some of my grandfather's family was Pentecostal, and she said to me, don't you let those Baptists, when we go over there, when you go with me, tell you that the Pentecostals, that the gift of tongues they have is not real. She said, don't you listen to them one minute. You just smile or you can say, Mama said, that's wrong. I don't care what you do. I said, well, then why don't we just go with the Pentecost? And she said, well, you know, I have to get my hair fixed once a week, and I have to wear makeup, and I like to have my toes and fingernails painted. So that ain't going to work for me. 
But, but she said, tongues, tongues is right. So just go with what's right every time you worship. That's what she told me when I was a kid. Wherever you worship, find what's right and just go with that. Well, when I, when I was 18, I finally was introduced to someone I didn't know named Holy Spirit. See, there comes a moment where Holy Spirit has to become real in your life. See, you have to have that Pentecost moment in your life. And I can remember when I was on staff for 10 years at the Baptist church, they would say, we do don't want you bringing up that Holy Spirit again. We just want to talk about Jesus. We just want Jesus. I said, you're not going to get Jesus if you don't get Holy Spirit. Because Jesus is at the right hand of the Father. You know, sometimes I wonder, how, how can they not read? You know, I mean, it's just right there. This is not rocket scientist here. It's not being super spiritual The Word of God says He's at the right hand of the Father. I'm seated next to Him, and through Him and by His Spirit, I have access in to come boldly before Father's throne room. See, Holy Spirit is dwelling here in earth with us, and you were made for Him to dwell inside of you. That is one of the greatest mysteries ever that the third person of the Godhead has chosen to live by his spirit in you. And Hebrews 9 says, and flow through your bloodstream. That's what's making your heart think right. That's what's making your heart pure. That's what's causing the pure in heart to see God. 